I'm Greg Powell, and this is Investors Insights. You're listening to Investors Insights with President and CEO Greg Powell and the Portfolio Strategy Team at Bot Plan Partners, Ashley Page and Franklin Bradford. Welcome to Investors Insights. Today we have a very special guest, Governor Kay Ivey, who I have tremendous respect for. Uh, Governor Ivey has had a huge impact on the state of Alabama. And if you're watching uh, this on our blog, I encourage you to subscribe to it. Simply type in your email address to the right of this video and click Submit. If you're listening to this as a podcast, subscribe in iTunes or your podcast provider. This way you can stay in touch and up to date on important financial and market information that we have for you each week. So now let's talk with our very special guest. Uh, Governor Kay Ivey, I could sit here today and tell you she's a native of Camden, Alabama. She's an Auburn grad. She's had various uh, career positions uh, in banking, which is one I, I know uh, quite a bit about. Uh, she's also been in uh, hospital work administration. She's also been involved in the legislative process for some time. She's been Alabama's state treasurer. The other thing I need to tell you is that she's one of only two women that has held such a high position in the state of Alabama, and she's the only Republican that has held that position. I am thrilled to have her here because she understands business, she understands technology, and I'm going to ask her a few questions about military as well. So Governor Avi, it's always great to see you. Oh, Greg, it's so good to be with you. Glad to be here with you again today. Well, we can't thank you enough, uh, not only in terms of being here today, but also from the standpoint of uh, just uh, your leadership in the state of Alabama. Well, thank you. It's a joy to serve. Well, I have, I have seen you in action before, and uh, your pro-business attitude is, has been tremendous, and I thank you for that. So uh, I'd like to ask you a few questions. We've got listeners here and viewers, and so uh, I'd like to just touch on some of those three points that I just mentioned uh, and get your insights, your wisdom, because ultimately as, as the economy grows or contracts, <coughs> depending on how it's going, um, decisions coming out of uh, Montgomery can impact that either way. Uh, what, do you, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges for business owners in the state of Alabama today? The biggest challenges for, for business owners is certainly the overreach of the Obama administration with unnecessary punitive regulations, such as in EPA, Environmental Protection Agency. Mm -hmm. Look at what it's doing to our coal industry, we just had a very contentious right. race in the Public Service Commission and um, with Obamacare, these unnecessary interventions are just uncalled for. And so this is very troubling, but um, we have the option of flipping six states real soon coming up to put them back in the Republican control mm -hmm. in the Congress, right. and that will help. But all, all the while, we've got to stay strong here in Alabama with our elected leaders because the Tenth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution still gives states the ability to stand strong and say no right. against the federal government. And that's what we're doing in Alabama, to stay right. strong. The other big um, challenge for business owners is apathy. Okay, all right. It's apathy. Um, in fact, I tell people it's the biggest enemy among us because if, if people that are pro-business especially are not engaged, then um, we'll be wimps and we cannot tolerate that because if states stand strong, then um, government can't grow. Right. So it's very important that we get involved and you say, well, what can I do to make a difference? I'm a business owner. Well, number one, there are a lot of things you can do. One, um, you don't have to be just be elected. Right. Um, there are many appointments that you can um, ask for or let us know that you're interested in. Uh, I have a lot of appointments to make, and I'm proud of the ones especially I've made with the Ethics Commission and the mm -hmm. Alabama Trust Fund. But I want, to know, I want to appoint qualified, capable folks who are interested in the field that they are if, you know, applying for it. Sure. And it's important that our 
pro-business people serve. Right. So I encourage people to let it be known that they do want to be appointed. Uh, also, business owners can volunteer to serve with business groups such as uh, the Alabama Workforce Councils that are formed across the state. Uh, your own Zeke Smith here in um, Birmingham right. heads up the Workforce Councils, and that's the group of business and uh, educators per district of the state sitting down so that uh, educators can truly know what the needs of business and industry are. Yeah. So there are definitely ways for the business owners to be involved, but apathy is just the worst thing among us. If we get to the place where we say, well, it doesn't matter, it's going to get done to us again, yeah. then sure enough, it will. Right. Because that's what we're seeing now, and we've got to continue to be proactive and strong, and every individual can count. Well, you, you definitely have been a leader that's encouraged me to get involved, and I, I think it was J. Paul Getty that said, if you're, not, if you're in business and not involved in politics, you won't be in business for long. Well, for example, well, early on in this administration, Governor Bentley signed an executive order creating the, um, to improve uh, state government. Right. And right. you and I were appointed by him yeah. to that commission. I served as chairman, and you were on improving state government. That was government. a huge honor for me. Well, it was an honor but for all of us, but we worked hard. And in six months, if you remember, wow. our team put together a plan that has become the groundwork and the foundation for much of the uh, streamlining and the yes. right-sizing of state government that's right. going on and will continue to go on. Sure. So the work matters. It does, very much so. And I, and I love the healthy debate. I loved when we were together and people bringing up ideas and looking at it from different perspectives. And you chairing that was uh, seeing you in action inspired me even more, just for yeah. what that's worth. So thank you. So well, let me ask you about technology. I'm hearing a lot from you know, uh, business owners uh, about technology and, and the pros and cons of it. How do you feel like technology is impacting the businesses and the business owners in Alabama and what we can do about it? Well, very recently I was uh, attended the uh, National Republican Lieutenant Governor's Conference and um, the impact of technology was definitely on the agenda. And in fact, um, Newt Gingrich spoke to us. Okay. And he was Skyped in. Okay. <laughs> and um, he told us some amazing things. And for example, in our iPhones, our iPhones are more powerful than the computer. Sure. And through the iPhone, we get apps. Y'all have apps. Oh, I've we do. That. Yeah, we have our own app. Yeah, absolutely. And you can download your own apps. Mm -hmm. The beauty about down downloading certain apps that are useful to you is that it puts the individual in direct touch with the provider mm -hmm. so that you don't have to have a bureaucracy. Uh, you think about um, there's some med apps that are up that are available. Sure. Yeah. And just think, if in the palm of your hand you had an app that you could push and the doctor would come on and you could tell the doctor through this app that you had a high fever, been running for two days, what do you need to do? You don't have to go to the doctor, you don't have to go to the hospital. You can get some answers here. Right. And uh, just think what that would do in the hands of our veterans coming uh, over. Sure. Uh, it would transform the right. Veterans Administration, the whole hospital mm -hmm. structure. Right. So, and you think about, uh, there's another app called Duolingo. Well, Regardless of where we live in Alabama, there are folks around us that speak another language. Sure. Uh, and do. that's going to keep on keeping on. Yes. Whether it's Spanish or Korean or Chinese mm -hmm. or German or... And so at the palm of your hand, you have the equipment, you know, the ability to learn directly. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to buy anything. You just download the app. So in the palm of our hand... Uh, the iPhone is going to transform informational technology. Yeah. It'll go a long way toward breaking down bureaucracies, whether they're business bureaucracies or government bureaucracies. And we've all got to get up to speed on iPhones now. Oh, you're right. That's our. In, in fact, we talk about here at Five Plan Partners that that's our competition. 
in a lot of ways. We, we believe in high-tech, high-touch, and that's really what you've talked about here, where you can get the, the human factor from that doctor, and mm -hmm. at the same time, it came through technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really believe that the, 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 well, and this is what inspired me in starting Five Plan Partners years ago, was that the technology industry was changing the financial service industry. And, uh, and then from there, we, we, are, uh, we are saying now we think education, government, and healthcare will be the next three areas that huge impact will be. So, if, and, and I'm thrilled to hear your leadership and being at these conferences to understand how all that's going on because that's what we need. Well, we all got to stay current. Yes, right. There's no room for apathy with being right. current about what's going on in sure. your daily work. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I I keep thinking about that the the apathy you've brought up because I think there's there's a saying that silence can mean consent. And the apathy is the same thing. And so I, we're, we're going to encourage everybody to, to participate more. And then uh, last, I just want, I have to ask you, because I know this is a strong cause for you. You're very passionate about this in your leadership. But talk to us about what you're currently doing for the, our military personnel here in Alabama. Serving as chairman of the Military Stability Commission is probably the most personally rewarded of any duty that's been assigned to the Lieutenant Governor of Alabama by the legislature. There's a BRAC, Base Realignment and Closure, mm -hmm. that occurs ever so many years, and the last one in Alabama occurred in 2005, when the Department of Defense realigns and or replaces bases or missions. Well, that BRAC is coming again sooner than we know. Yeah. Don't know when it's coming, but it's on its way. So over three years ago, we started this initiative. And I was proud to bring forth the statewide approach to finding solutions and a plan to have a strong preparation and a strong attack against any attempts to realign our yeah. military yeah. in Alabama. Alabama is blessed to have four major military installations. Right. right, with great reputation. And if you live anywhere within 100, 150 miles of a Mercedes or a Hyundai, then you know how important staying in touch with those firms are. The same is true with our four military bases around the state. And previously, in the face of a BRAC, the four military bases and their communities were sort of left to their own to come up with their plan to fight back and their resources and their approach to deal with the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. So I presented the approach early on in uh, January of 11, after we were inaugurated to the uh, legislature to say, let's, let's adopt this new approach and have a statewide coordinated message and plan to get our military totally prepared so we may protect and preserve our military assets in this great state and hopefully add some more to it. So that's exactly what we've been doing. And right here in Birmingham, let me remind you, you have the 117th mm -hmm. uh, yes. Air Refueling Wing. Right. And um, they're trying to start a uh, Friends of the 117th. You don't have to be in the military to become a member or to join them and help them in their efforts to be sure they're prepared, and Ron Boyd, whose phone number I'll give you, okay, um, is heading that up here in uh, Montgomery, uh, Birmingham. He's okay. an attorney. Sure. And I just encourage all of your viewers and listeners to um, get engaged and become a member. So we've got friends of Fort Rucker. We've got friends in Maxwell and Montgomery. Same thing at Redstone. We need those oh. at the Birmingham sure. 117th. Right. So preserving protecting and adding to our military missions and bases in this state. That's essential, and we will be prepared whenever that break okay. comes. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's fantastic news, and also I love the opportunity to, to get more involved that way. We, our military personnel, these are, these are volunteers who, you know, serve our country, and, um, uh, you know, what they have gone through over these past Many years. Many of them work in your firms and That's exactly your right. Customers. That's exactly right. You're, you're right And about we need that. to keep those assets. Yes. And help them attract some other locations and missions as well. Sure. No, I totally agree. Well, thank you for, uh, 
for all that you're doing. I don't, I've seen you in action. I don't know how you go at the pace you do. And uh, uh, I just thank you for all the, the leadership, but also the energy and the passion that you put behind it. So, yeah. and uh, you know, we're, we're, we're excited for the future and you've created a future uh, and participated across the board in uh, Alabama leadership. So thank you so much. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you. And it is a team effort. And I'm engaged. If y'all be engaged, we'll be engaged together. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. More information at FIPlanPartners.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA, SIPC.